Hi beautiful friends and welcome today. I am really feeling the weight of this word and I don't quite know what direction to go with it so I'm just yielding to the flow of the Holy Spirit and my prayer is today that I will simply be a vessel that the Lord can speak through. I will be the Lord's mouthpiece and that the Lord will touch your heart deeply today as only the Lord can by the power of his word. The Lord says that he is empowering you to overcome no matter what you face. You will face it fearlessly and you will face it faithfully, head on and strong by the word of the Lord. You, child of the living God, will overcome. God is setting you up to win. He's setting his church up in this hour of his power to win for great victory. Our God is the God of heaven's armies. He is setting up Israel to win. Our God is the God of Israel and he will not fail and Israel and his church shall prevail. In Jesus' mighty name, I hear the sound of heaven resounding. This is our finest and our final hour and it's going to be filled with heaven's power. It's going to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit released through us. I am reforming, says the Lord. Rise up, reformists. The Lord is calling those not to be problem makers but to be solution takers and we are to be those who the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. We are going to take forcefully at this time God's purposes when the enemy and all of the powers of darkness are coming against the light, are coming against knowing that the time is so short. We are going to stand on the right side of his story. We are going to proclaim his glory and Jesus is going to have the last laugh. In Psalm 2, we read that although the, the rulers of nations, they scheme, they strategize together against the Lord and against his anointed. We're seeing that happening uh, on a mass scale now against God's anointed, who he has appointed Israel. <laughs> he has returned Israel to her land and we're seeing nations scheme and strategize. We're seeing Iran and her proxies arise. We're seeing the evil that is being unleashed right before our eyes. But I want to tell you with assurance from Psalm 2, the Lord is not troubled. The Lord has not been taken by surprise. But we see there that the Lord himself sits above it all. He is enthroned. He is in complete control. And it says he laughs at the schemes, at the fruitless ridiculous strategies of man. We can laugh in the face of every enemy by the word of the Lord. We are filled with his grace and his grace, his divine ability. The Holy Spirit is more than sufficient, will be sufficient, more than enough for you and for me at this time. I sense that the Lord is calling us to partnering with heaven, to being those solution takers, bringing forth the solutions and the answers from God's throne. I sense that the Lord is pouring out his rivers of living water. It's, for, it's pouring from his throne and it's pouring to us with miracle working power. Rivers of living water, the Holy Spirit being outpoured upon our sons and daughters. We're going to see incredible healings. We're going to see the former and the latter rains coming together. We're going to see God's amazing works and wonders poured out upon the earth. The year 5784 that we've entered into, the Jewish New Year, which overlaps with our year 2023-24, I've been proclaiming, strengthen your walls, your gates, your borders and your doors. We are on the threshold of the much more of God. I've been calling forth before we saw this war unleashed from the 7th of October. Wartime leaders, presidents, prime ministers, governments, 
uh, church leaders to arise, the Lord put on my heart very strongly, there would be a changing of the guard. But within that, I saw first and foremost, the Lord was about changing hearts. And he wants to give opportunities for leaders to rend their hearts <laughs> and come to him. It says in firstly today, I, I want to say God is looking for those with repentant hearts. Rend your hearts, not your clothes. The superficial is done. The call for the supernatural has come. The superficial will not cut it any longer. It's no longer going to be sufficient to be about appearances and about looking good. We can't have that form uh, of godliness and deny the true power. But in this day, there is going to be a distinction between what is truly of light and of darkness in this hour. The year 5784, the number four, also means chaff. So we know it means the year of the door. We know that it means authority and God has given and is pouring out increased authority and double portion power upon his own right now in this hour. And it also means chaff and within that we see how the um, the wheat at harvest time it would be threshed we've been called to that threshing floor this year Israel is on the threshing floor the church is on the threshing floor and wow my life off as a family as if you've been tuning in with me I've been sharing how the Lord has had us on the threshing floor and God is calling us to the much more of God he is producing the harvest of his goodness through our lives and that means all that is not of him has to the chaff has to go and it will be blown away by the power of the Holy Spirit in these days and the Lord wants us completely surrendered Joel 2 verse 12 to 13 says now therefore says the Lord turn to me with all your heart with fasting with weeping and with mourning so rend your heart and not your garments return to the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. Oh, God's desire is to bless us. God's desire is to pour out his goodness upon us at this time. And the Lord is desiring for us when it says here to rend your heart um, and turn to the Lord. Rend your hearts and not your clothes we see that there used to be that time where they the priests they would rend their clothes and it, it was to look so good and to look repentant and to look spiritual well we're now living in the days where that's not going to cut it it's not about the looks it is about God is looking for purity of heart and as we yield to him the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin the Holy Spirit will fill us within and will overflow and burst the banks of our lives rend your heart not your garments God is calling us to holiness and when we are repentant then the Lord says he can repair he will repair there in that place of repentance and I believe it's a place he wants us living in daily in that holy living before him that means separated set apart for God just like the chaff and the wheat has to be separated there's going to be a distinction in these days between the superficial between the chaff it's all going to be blown away and between the supernatural harvest that which will be eternal that fruitfulness and the true wheat God is calling us and I'm sensing that call so heavy and so strong upon my heart for his own for his church for Israel at this time in returning and repenting, there will be resting and repairing. We read in the word of God, I believe it's Jeremiah 30, it speaks about one of my favourite scriptures. In returning and rest, you will be saved. In quietness and confidence, you will find rest, but you would not. Oh, that's so tragic. Oh, but we will. May we learn from the scriptures to return continually to live from that place within our spirit not to be living according to the flesh and our emotions and our feelings but to be living and to be led by the spirit to talk uh, in the spirit to walk in the spirit as we're, we're taught um, in the new in the new testament scriptures so <clears throat> I just want to say today first and foremost God is looking for that purity of heart so rend your hearts not your clothes 
Um, he's calling us to supernatural living, not superficial. Um, he's not calling us to live according to natural means. It won't cut it, but to live supernaturally above it all in Jesus' mighty name. Um, in, do you know, we can look at all the ways that we have trusted maybe in the things we shouldn't have trusted in in the past. And those have all been stepping stones to the place that we find ourselves in now. As I've said before, the Lord showed me a number of weeks ago that there was going to be um, blood, fire and gore we would see poured out uh, on the earth. But for the children and the people of God's and on the world, but for the people of God's word, it would be blood, fire and awe. We'd be in, in awe of God and all that he's doing. And we must learn from what has gone on before. We can look at the, the battleground of the past few years, the BLM, the um, COVID, vaccines, now uh, war as we're going through the door of 2023 into 24 and the Hebrew year 5784. We can see how so easily those who should have known better, we just fell to what was maybe an easier uh, response to please people, to do what looked good and what looked right. So many pressures came uh, at believers and unbelievers from every direction just to comply. <laughs> but instead, we are called to defy every lie, to not comply with evil and with the strategies of darkness. If you want to see clearly in these days, if you want to see uh, differently continually, if you want to live righteously and to do what is right before God, then God gives us the key for 2020 vision, doesn't he? And it says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, how's that? Uh, for 2020 vision, go to 2 Chronicles 2020. Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. To believe means to lean on, to rely upon, to trust in, to um, require him above and beyond anything else. When we really believe in the Lord and lean on him, it says then you're going to be walking on a firm foundation. You're going to go safely. You're going to go prosperously. You're going to be established. Um, and it says, believe the prophets and you shall prosper. I remember a number of years ago, actually, whenever uh, the, the Western world hit recession, um, I don't know, was it 14 odd years ago now? And property markets in America and here in the UK, everything plummeted. The banks were going under and uh, people were in fear and worry and people were losing homes and, and all sorts. Now, at that point, God had, um, I had been in Christian ministry and I was uh, overseeing all of the pastoral and the teams within our church, uh, working within our senior pastor and then overseeing all of the the other pastoral team and the leaders. Um, and at that time, I went with us, wonderful senior pastor then, Trevor Pimlot, to a uh, leader's afternoon tea at uh, where th this conference was going to be uh, kicking off with Cindy Jacobs and an incredible prophetic voice. And that was the first time that, that I met her and um, was associated with, with her incredible ministry with the wonderful Rod and Julie Anderson, who I love dearly. And whilst uh, there at this uh, particular afternoon tea, she went off track from what she was talking about. I'm going to encourage you today how the prophetic leads the way and how God will lead us and keep us safe with all the decisions that we have to take to the future. So we will do better next time. <laughs> so we will be prepared when we hear and we receive the prophetic word of the Lord and we'll know how to hear and know his voice. And whilst I was at this um, this particular meeting, she uh, went off track of what she was talking about and she suddenly burst out with property, property, property. 
I can see here somebody God is calling you into property. I had just launched myself because of the need was the call. I'd been asked to, you know, take hold of that baton at that time. And there was a great need in the church that I've grown up in and that I love. Um, so I was willing to lay down that career side and to, to be going into that full time ministry. But property was very much in my heart and I felt a draw into property. But the church was calling over here. And um, she began to prophesy and she said, there's someone here. God is going to really bless you. He's leading you into property and he's going to you're going to be the means of many people making a lot of money out of property. Well, I could feel the, the Holy Spirit. My spirit was leaping within me. I knew that word was for me. And as things then panned out, um, as that property call went out, I hid that in my heart and over then the coming months there were some issues financially uh, I was expecting our fourth out of five babies our fourth uh, wonderful uh, child our daughter Liella Grace at that time and there came the point when um, the church was no longer in that in that position to pay so it's no problem I would keep volunteering into what I was what I was doing there but the property side, I needed to work in order to fulfill ministry, etc. again. And that is where God's spirit, God, uh, I obeyed the voice of the prophets. I knew what God had put in my heart. The prophetic will only ever come as, it, as something the Lord's already shown you or a confirmation to you, or else he will then confirm it to and through you um, to the future. And as I then stepped out into this property arena, literally... Um, God blessed and it, it grew. There came a time when that recession hit and I had just taken on my first big property deal and it was all going swimmingly, a whole host of apartments and then a number of um, below market value new build houses for investors and people were all lined up to buy them and then the market crashed, the bank started going under and I'll never forget being away on our 10th wedding anniversary. Our little uh, baby girl had been born then because she was so tiny, she came with us to uh, Alicante in Spain. And whilst there, I, my phone was bouncing off the veranda, I remember, one early one morning, I thought, whatever's going on. And I'd had this foreboding all night. Ever had that where you just sent something, be prepared, something isn't right. And it was our lawyers back in the UK asking me, what do we do? The banks have pulled mortgages from underneath all of the investors who were buying these properties through you, Christine. What do we do? They're asking me. And, do you know, I was very aware in that moment we are to be the light in the darkness. And I said, there, there is always a solution. I just said at the beginning of this message, didn't I? Wow, coming full circle here. God wants us to be solution takers from his kingdom, to be those who take God's solutions, God's goodness, God's ways, uh, God's light, um, and we, we take it by force and we bring it through into the dark arenas of this world. And as I prayed then, literally, literally um, and I'm just speaking out very naturally, supernaturally, to lawyers and to the legal teams, there'll be a solution. Leave it with me. Well, I felt like a con woman. I'm like, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And the Holy Spirit said, um, Christine, if you got this a scripture, I wonder if I can find it here. It was basically along the lines of if you can't um, run with the footman, how will you run with the horses? And so I was aware that the Lord was saying as awful as this seems right now, um, you need to trust me because you're going to have much bigger to deal with in the future. <laughs> and I believe we're coming into the much bigger and the greater miraculous and the greater outpouring of all the Lord wants to do and of the greater solution making that God wants us to be taking by force from the kingdom of heaven and destroying the strategies of the kingdom of darkness in this last hour um, of God's power in the world as we know it, because Jesus is coming so soon. And as I then prayed there, I felt the Lord say, part of your warfare is just carry, carry right on. You're on a four day break away with your husband for your 10th wedding anniversary and your warfare is your welfare. Uh, and that is to know that all is well with me. It, 
in me and with me and therefore you're with me and all is going to be good you will see so I felt the Lord is showing me just to trust him so I'm sitting I'm carrying on as normal I'm feeling like a con woman I'm sat in a hot tub and in that hot tub I'm saying Lord I feel like a con woman here I've got investors where the rug's being pulled it big national developers thinking that we're fulfilling on all of these multiple properties and here I am sat in a hot tub and you're telling me to it's well just to trust you um but okay Lord I will obey you and the Lord spoke to me and the Lord said Christine trust me by the time you are 40 you will make a million now that was going to be in just over a year from that date about a year and a month and whenever you start up a new business anybody will know who's in business it takes usually at least three years they say to break even well let me just short circuit that story that night I was having dinner with my husband he was the only person I shared this with he didn't knock me he didn't rock my world but he is my rock that God has given to me and instead he said wow honey that's amazing if the Lord says that then the Lord's going to do that. And literally, the Lord gave me a strategy. God gives his prophetic word. He showed me it would be well. He gave me a strategy where literally, little me, feeling like a little David against Goliath. I was just a little startup business. But as I followed the word of the Lord, when I was back home in the UK, I can remember being up all night praying and hearing the birds singing and it was getting light the next morning. And I was still praying and strategizing and God was giving me the solution and the plan and literally our little startup company miraculously became the bank <laughs> through for all of our investors to complete on their properties he showed me what to do he showed me the backer to go to he showed me what to put in place it wasn't in my expertise but we have all that we need in him and why I'm saying this is to say if you can't run with the footman Christine right back then how will you run with the horses since then I've had to experience much bigger greater issues and solutions because there are never any problems in God there are only solutions whenever we have 2020 vision and whenever we see as God longs for us to see and let me just bring that story to a dramatic conclusion pastors church leaders have told me oh people won't understand Christine your business miracles don't share them from the platform well I feel led to shout them loud and strong right now to the glory of God because what is coming we're going to need the miraculous strategies of God the miraculous solutions God wants us to prosper Isaac sowed in a time of famine and he reaped a hundredfold so whenever the world is in fear and in famine and in lack that is when the children of God are to be children of light and children of prosperity children of kingdom miracles and solutions so that the world can see how great is God that is with you and with me and they're going to want to know him too and that's from uh, a year that went on I can remember sitting actually in a, a church meeting and my phone flashing up and a message came through to say wow you're not going to believe this in the first year as the accounts were going through get ready for this our business had just net one million and forty thousand pounds now I'm saying and then the Lord showed me by the way sow it to grow it we have so much. Um, God has shown us to the, the business is purely a vehicle for God's works and wonders on the earth and for our family and for church and for to bless Israel and to be a blessing wherever we go. And in that first year, God did what only God could do. I couldn't. I would have been flat on my face. I would have been finished. But for the prophetic word of the Lord, where the Lord leads you, the Lord is more than able to keep you. So trust his purposes. Sometimes when it feels like he's led you into the unknown, may it be enough to trust the known God. May it be enough to know him. Know he is with you. He will not fail you. You will prevail and God will always bring you through. There's a miracle right there to encourage you in these times, in these days. At the last recession, at the last lack, God turned it into pain, into gain when we trust him all the way. So believe in the Lord, trust in him and you shall be established Believe the prophets and you shall prosper. And you see God's little smile. Oh, as soon as I heard that figure, 
God said, had said to me in the middle of my brokenness, which became my surrender and openness to heaven because I could do nothing. Um, when everything looked like it was going under and bellies up. Well, instead, what the Lord did, he said, by the time you're 40, you're going to make a million. And by the time I was 40, the company made a million and 40. There's a heaven's little smile. Our Father, God created sense of humour. Something else just throwing in right now. The Lord wants us to be joyful, to laugh lots, get together with your friends. Don't be down mouthed and disheartened by what you see going on in the world. But for people of the Lord, let us be celebrating in his house. Let us be filling his house with joy and praise and laughter. Let us be people who in his church, his ecclesia, us showing his light. God created sense of humour. Laughter does good like a medicine. That's a biblical principle. So let's be people who are full of joy, full of friendship at this time, who come together. Forsake not the gathering of yourselves together. We need one another. And I just feel to say, if you're out of fellowship, if you felt like you don't need church in the days that are coming, we're going to need each other more than ever. Come home, come home to um, your church family in Jesus name be connected uh, just throwing that in there right now so yeah the Lord would say today to us very clearly as we let the Lord have his way in our lives that there's nothing to be compared to that which God has prepared for you and he's prepared works for you to walk in and to accomplish since before the foundations of the world in Jeremiah 2 um, or is it maybe Jeremiah 12 verse 5 I can't read my writing in my journal here I love this oh this was the the full verse if you have run with the horse with the footman and they have wearied you then how can you contend with horses and if in the land of peace when it's all been peaceful and and fine in which you trusted if they wearied you then how will you do in the flood plains of the Jordan when the, the flood waters rise? When we see sin, evil, recession, war rising on those flood waters, when everything seems to be flooding in, trust in the Lord <laughs> is the answer. Trust in the much more of God and great will be your reward. So number two leads us straight into what time is it? It's harvest time it's not just a flooding time it's not just a time of disaster and sin in the world there is that's what is there for the chaff but for the wheat for those who are being purified who are being made ready the bride of Christ for Israel and for his church he's getting us ready it's harvest time and he wants us to be about bringing in his harvest multitudes of souls to him that's why we need to be shining brightly be, we need to be light in the night and in the increasing darkness. So what time is it? Yes, yes, there is the distinguishment between the world and between the people of God's word. There is that separation. It's harvest time for us. We're going to be harvesting miracles, signs, wonders. We're living in the, they talk about the signs of the times. Well, we're living in the times of the signs. Increasingly, you're just going to see signs and wonders being fulfilled right before your very eyes. In Joshua 3, verse 15, it says, The Jordan overflows its banks throughout harvest season. But as soon as the priests carrying the ark reach the Jordan and their feet touch the water's edge, the flowing water stood still. It backed up as far upstream as a place called Adam. where, And all of the overflowing water down to the sea of another place, the Salt Sea, were completely cut off. And the people of God, the children of God, the Israelites, this is for Israel and the church, passed over opposite Jericho. What time is it? It's harvest time. When the floods were rising, there was something different that was happening. The children of God were not going to be experiencing the impossibilities. They were not going to be experiencing blockages and blockades. They weren't going to be experiencing the troubles that the world would experience. Instead, for the children, the people of God, God caused 
them to walk right through. And God is going to give us miracle after miracle too, that we are people who are going to pass over to the other side. This is harvest time. Yes, there'll be floodings of sins and evil and we're going to see that in the world. But for us, we're going to be about the harvest. We're going to win the greatest harvest. We're going to be about miracles. We're going to be about passing over. God will cause, just as he caused the angel of death to pass over the Israelites um, as he led them out of Egypt, God will cause evil to pass over the children of God. There will be a Goshen for you and for me. God is going to lead us out and he's going to lead us in to his promised land. What time is it for us? It's harvest time. And thirdly today, I sense the Lord would say, what is for the world isn't for you. Miracle time. It's Passover time. They passed over to the promised land in, a, in the flood time for the world, but harvest time for the church until that ultimate harvest where we are going to be the wheat. The chaff will be separated and blown away. But th those who know Jesus, we will be harvested. We will be taken up to be with him forevermore. How wonderful is that? God is calling the remnant in no man's land. Pilgrims, we are told to be pilgrims just passing through. This world is not our home. Heaven is. We're pilgrims passing through. And those who have felt rejected, dejected, like you're in no man's land. The Lord spoke to me the other night and said, that's my perfect plan. He's leading each and every one of us to that place of complete surrender where we will be in no man's land. But we will be not seeking the praise, the affirmation, acceptance of man, but we are going to be seeking to please him. And as a byproduct of pleasing him, we will then be the mouthpiece and the voice of God to please and to bring what the people really need, which is Jesus, which is his love, which is his miracle working power um, at work in us, in Jesus mighty name. So God says, I am reforming, rise up reformers. Will you rise up in the much more of God and will you receive from the Lord today? If you'll say yes, then I want to pray for you because the Lord has a great work to release through you. He has got great wonders that he wants to show you and he has got great and precious promises that he will fulfill for you. So, Father, I just thank you today. We come to you, Lord. We say, Father God, have your way. Lord, we will rend our hearts, not our clothes. We don't want to look good before others, before man. We're not here to impress others, Lord. We have an audience of one, and that is you. Father, we surrender. We rend our hearts to you. Lord, we know that you're calling us to seek your face at this time. And Lord, your face we seek. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that in returning and resting and in repenting, there will be your repairing. Lord, you will make perfect everything that concerns us, Lord. Father, we thank you today, Jesus, that it is harvest time. As we see the floodwaters rise in the, wor in the world, for people of your word, Lord, let us be about your harvest. The workers are few, your word says, the harvest is ripe and ready. And Lord, may we bring in those great rewards of the cross, the great rewards of heaven, the lost to you. Use us mightily, Lord, as darkness increases on the, on the earth. Let your light shine brighter than ever, I pray. Lord, I thank you for your divine separation today. Wheat from chaff. Lord, on the threshing floor, we lay our lives and we say, purify us. Make us ready. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Blow upon us, we pray. And Lord, let our lives go far and wide and reach many for Christ in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.